I've always believed that to be a leader, uh, the best thing to do to ga gain anybody's respect is to show them that you're willing to work hard, mm -hmm. is to show them that you are part of the team, to show them that you want to make things better, that you want to improve things. You went to the different chiefs of services, mm -hmm. ser service line mm -hmm. chiefs is what we would call them, mm -hmm. I guess, in group health, mm -hmm. and talked to them about what what the students could could bring or what the mm -hmm. PAs might bring maybe mm -hmm. that's a good place to start again what how did you twist their arms uh, it was being real it was telling them what giving them specifics and it was um, showing them how we function in the ER and how what an asset we were to the other other rotations in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And once I think, then we would make sure that if we did get that rotation, we put a very experienced PA there. Of course. And that, that then sold them, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part. Never had anybody say, we don't want another PA. They always said they wanted another. So that was cool. That's getting the first person in the door. Yeah, that's right, the, the right person. Mm -hmm. the ER physicians were, they're a different breed. So Absolutely. it was easy. They have a great sense of humor, so that helped, because I have a little bit of a sense of humor. And um, so we just hit it off. We were able, you know, it's like there's no, there's no beating around the bush. We could just get to the point. Besides the ER, it was going into the other rotations and showing the chiefs that this is what we could do for you. In general, the PA profession is wonderful to just plop into any specialty mm -hmm. because they have the experience under their belt of medicine. So then they can go to dermatology, they can go to surgery, they can go to ER medicine. One of the big questions we would get when we were interviewing people is, will I need this residency program in order to get a job in ER medicine? And back then we said, well, not really, but it helps. Sure. And, um, and I still think that residencies are important in that way. Um, the ER residency, I just think PAs in general, you've got the, the medics with all of the military guys coming out who've had a lot of experience in um, Afghanistan or you know it was in Vietnam when we started the medics program and that kind of stuff. So I, I just find that personally I think PAs are ideal for ER medicine and primary care. I think that that is sort of the whole philosophy about PAs is that we fill in holes and we've been able to fill in holes of specialties that haven't, for example, rheumatology, dermatology, where there haven't been residents and physicians who come out Mm -hmm. to, to take those roles, then PAs, we've been able to fill those gaps. I think that's ideal to give them a three-month three, eight, three month residency for a seasoned PA. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I would say that they would pretty much be ready to go. I got hooked. And... Um, you know, it was just uh, slowly getting more and more involved and and uh, just really enjoyed it and found out that it was a lot of fun. And, um, and the students loved you. Let's not leave that out. This, it was fun. We, um, you know, it was, it was great to be able to... I had gone to Stanford and had a lot of really excellent, uh, well-known physicians teaching us, but they weren't teachers. <laughs> And so to be, and I just thought to myself, why can't they make this easier? Medicine really isn't all that difficult. You can explain it easy. Um, and if I can get it, anybody can get it. So when I was 
studying and preparing my lectures, I thought, oh, this is easy. And so, of course, using humor, um, woke up the students and gave them, you know, a reason to be there and also help them learn better. So I, um, I just really enjoyed that. I felt like I was um, making a difference and I felt that I wanted to make sure that each and every one of them got it, mm -hmm. not just the top person. You know, that I, I wanted to make sure that if they went out and they saw patients and they were from medics, that everybody would say, wow, they're a medics grad and I can mm -hmm. tell. So. And one of the things that I've really been passionate about is wanting more visibility about PAs. Um, group health, their patients are pretty familiar with what P, who PAs yeah, are. Yeah. So I feel lucky there, but you get the occasional patient who doesn't know. But with working in the general public and with uh, legislators and uh, some administrators and even some physicians and some of these meetings I would go to, um, there was a lot of, uh, they didn't have a, lot, a clear understanding of what PAs were, what we could do. Um, they kind of jumbled us all together with nurses and nurse practitioners mm -hmm. and, um, and even had some animosity. So I thought, well, it's time to get, I want, PA to be a household word. Right. You say, when somebody asks you, what do you do, and you say, I'm a physician, everybody knows what that is. If you say, I'm a nurse, everybody knows what that is. When you say, I'm a PA, not everybody knows what that is. Well, I want it. At someday, when you say, I'm a PA, somebody's going to say, well, I know exactly what that is, and I have a PA, and, and I love my PA, mm -hmm. and they're the only people I want to see, or whatever. You know, I just... I really want to see that happen someday. And the only way that's going to happen is if we get out there and start putting the information out there over and over and over again. It was really good of you to put that issue front and center because mm -hmm. I do think, mm -hmm. I, I actually see it as a responsibility of every individual PA to make that happen. I, I agree with you. And I think that um, it certainly helps when you're an excellent PA. I think that speaks volumes mm -hmm. about the profession. But I think, too, you've got to sit and explain it. So when you do meet a patient who says, um, oh, well, you're my doctor, you need to say, well, no, I'm a PA, and not just let it go and then, you know what I mean? Right. You need to clarify at all times. What's the responsibility of a student in promoting PAs or of an individual PAs? Well, I think first and foremost is being the best PA you can be and making sure that whoever you're in contact with, whoever you see, the patient, the physician, that they're clear that of what a PA is, that you are a PA, you're not a physician, you're not a nurse, that you're a PA. And you're proud of that, and you show that by explaining and by being the best you can be and giving the best care that you can give. It's interesting to me in talking to, there's a number of us that are in the same generation and we're right. talking about the same time. Right. And one of the fun things that, that I think is fascinating to talk mm -hmm. about is how the career has taken us places we would have never imagined. Exactly. Is, would, would you say that about your career? Yes, I would. Well, I've worked hard in that. I've seen patients. I've done a good job. I've, um, but I, I think that things, doors have opened up for me that have just been fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys called me and said, do you want to teach that? And mm -hmm. do you want to run for a WAPA? Do you want to run for president? Well, I didn't want to run for president, but they couldn't find anybody. Yeah, everybody should do it once. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. But... Um, I just have been very, very fortunate, very blessed. It's been a good life, it's been a good career. It's it seems like it's a unique feature though of the PA profession mm -hmm. that there's so much flexibility and, and that most of us feel that doors are open that created opportunities for ourselves, our children. Exactly, you know, our exactly. Families. I think so too. And I think that, you know, the profession itself almost, because it exists, it attracts a certain type of personality, a certain type of person. Mm -hmm. And it's not the one who's 
father has paid for everything and is a physician and so they want to be a physician and mm -hmm. you know they're the ones who spent time in the Peace Corps working or were physicians in other countries. But I, but I hope that the career gives them the same thing that we've yes. got, which is you never knew where it would take you. Yes, and just tons of, I mean, the flexibility is amazing. Mm -hmm. You, to come out of school and say, well, I, I've been a primary care PA for a number of years. I think I want to do derm, or I think I want to do neurosurgery, mm -hmm. or gee, I'm interested in cardiology, or whatever. I think that's terrific. and. It's not only terrific for them, but it's terrific for our system mm -hmm. because we can fill gaps and fill those holes. And have fun doing it. And have fun doing it and, and be good at it. Mm -hmm.